it really underscores a growing contrast in the AI race at large. Now, in the U.S., the AI boom, it is being built on borrowed money. The general assessment, I think, is that the U.S. is still ahead uh, in the AI world. China, as a contrast, it is being built on efficiency. That's cheaper chips and open source models. And, you know, there's not going to be a winner and a loser. It's going to be relative degrees of dominance or excellence or what have you. The world's most powerful nations just discovered their greatest technological advantage might be slipping away. And it happened in a secret laboratory in Shenzhen, where engineers with fake names and hidden identities have done something that was supposed to be impossible for at least another decade. For years, there was one technology that separated the superpowers from everyone else. One machine so complex, so impossibly precise, that only a single company on Earth could build it. This machine determines who leads in artificial intelligence, who dominates military technology, and who controls the future of computing itself. The West built its entire strategy around keeping this technology out of Chinese hands. They were certain it would take China 20 to 30 years to crack the code. They were wrong. According to a bombshell investigation by Reuters, Chinese engineers have quietly assembled a working prototype of an extreme ultraviolet lithography system. This isn't speculation or rumor. The machine exists, it's operational, and it's already generating the exact wavelength of light needed to manufacture the world's most advanced computer chips. To understand why this changes everything, you need to know what makes this technology so special. Extreme ultraviolet lithography, or EUV, isn't just another manufacturing tool. It's the only way to create the microscopic patterns that make modern artificial intelligence possible. Every chat GPT query, every self-driving car decision, every advanced military system depends on chips made with this technology. The process works by using light with an incredibly short wavelength, just 13.5 nanometers, to draw circuit patterns onto silicon wafers. These patterns are so small that millions of transistors fit on something the size of your fingernail. The smaller these patterns get, the more powerful and efficient the chips become. Without EUV, you simply cannot make the processors that power today's AI revolution. The general assessment, I think, is that the U.S. is still ahead uh, in the AI world. It's in fact, the U.S., here, I'd say perhaps more than any other economy, although China's also ahead in robotics. Until now, a Dutch company called ASML held an absolute monopoly on this technology. Each EUV machine costs over $200 million, weighs as much as two fully loaded passenger jets, and contains hundreds of thousands of components sourced from suppliers around the world. ASML spent nearly two decades and billions of euros developing this technology before achieving commercial success in 2019. The complexity is staggering. Creating EUV light requires hitting tiny droplets of molten tin with powerful laser pulses 50,000 times per second. The resulting plasma emits the precious EUV photons, which then bounce off mirrors polished to atomic level perfection. A single fingerprint on one of these mirrors would destroy the entire system. The whole process happens in a perfect vacuum because air itself absorbs EUV light. This is why Western governments were so confident in their export controls. Starting in 2018, the United States pressured the Netherlands to block all EUV sales to China. By 2022, these restrictions expanded dramatically, covering not just EUV machines, but also older lithography tools, specialized software, and critical components. The strategy seemed foolproof. Without access to ASML's technology, China would remain permanently behind in the semiconductor race. But something unexpected happened in that Shenzhen laboratory. The Reuters investigation reveals a project shrouded in secrecy that rivals military weapons programs. Engineers were issued identification cards with false names. They use aliases even when talking to colleagues inside the facility. Teams are kept isolated from each other, with strict compartmentalization preventing any single person from understanding the complete system. Some employees reportedly sleep on-site, with restricted phone access and minimal contact with the outside world. The project has been compared to China's version of the Manhattan Project, and that comparison might not be an exaggeration. Huawei reportedly plays a central coordinating role, orchestrating efforts across chip design, equipment manufacturing, and system integration. This isn't normal commercial research. This is a national mission with the highest possible priority. What makes this breakthrough particularly striking is how they achieved it. The team includes former ASML engineers who brought invaluable expertise that can't be found in any textbook. 
They also acquired components from older lithography machines through secondary markets and equipment auctions. Parts from ASML, Nikon, and Canon systems were reportedly salvaged and repurposed for the prototype. This approach reflects a broader pattern in Chinese innovation. When faced with restrictions, they don't give up. They find alternative paths. In shipbuilding, China now launches more military vessels in a single year than the United States builds in a decade. In electric vehicles, Chinese companies like BYD went from being dismissed as copycats to becoming global leaders that even Tesla struggles to match. The talent pipeline tells another crucial part of this story. Walk into any advanced engineering program at a Western university, and you'll find Chinese students often outnumber locals. Major technology companies employ thousands of Chinese engineers who gain deep expertise before eventually returning home. When Western companies cancel projects or lay off teams, that knowledge doesn't disappear. It migrates. But here's where the story gets complicated. The Shenzhen prototype has successfully generated EUV light at the required wavelength. That's a massive achievement. However, it hasn't yet produced working chips, and that distinction matters more than any headline might suggest. Generating EUV light is like climbing the first major peak of a mountain range, only to discover even taller summits ahead. The history of EUV development shows why this matters. ASML demonstrated working EUV light sources years before the technology became commercially viable. The challenge was never creating the light itself, but creating enough of it, reliably, without destroying the delicate optics or contaminating the system. Early approaches failed because they couldn't deliver sufficient power for actual manufacturing. Some prototypes worked perfectly in the lab, but fell apart when pushed to production speeds. This is where experienced engineers urge caution. In complex engineering projects, the first 80% of progress often happens quickly. Teams make rapid breakthroughs, solve fundamental problems, and generate impressive demonstrations. But the final 20%, the part that turns a prototype into a production system, can take longer than everything that came before it. During this final phase, teams discover problems they never anticipated. Tiny vibrations that seemed insignificant suddenly ruin chip patterns. Temperature variations of fractions of a degree cause yields to collapse. Contamination particles smaller than viruses destroy entire production runs. These aren't problems you can solve with more money or more engineers. They require patient, methodical work that can stretch on for years. The optics challenge alone would make most engineers lose sleep. ASML's mirrors, primarily manufactured by Germany's Carl Zeiss, represent some of the most precise objects ever created by humans. They must maintain surface smoothness measured in fractions of atoms while operating under intense EUV radiation. Even the best Chinese research institutes acknowledge they haven't matched this level of precision. Yet dismissing China's progress would be a dangerous mistake. The timeline has already compressed far beyond what experts predicted. Analysts who once confidently stated China wouldn't reach this point until the mid-2030s now face a working prototype in 2025. Internal Chinese targets reportedly aim for limited production around 2028, with more realistic estimates suggesting 2030. Even if commercialization takes longer than optimists hope, the strategic implications are profound. EUV represented the last major technological barrier that China hadn't visibly crossed. It was the cornerstone of Western assumptions about maintaining permanent technological superiority. If this barrier falls, even partially, it forces a complete reconsideration of long-term strategic planning. The semiconductor industry has always been globally interconnected. No single country has ever controlled every aspect from raw materials to finished chips. What makes China's position unique is the possibility of becoming the first nation to approach complete end-to-end -end control across the entire technology stack. They already dominate rare earth processing, solar panel manufacturing, and battery production. Adding advanced semiconductors to that list would create unprecedented technological sovereignty. This shift reflects something deeper than just technological progress. It really underscores a growing contrast in the AI race at large. Now, in the U.S., the AI boom, it is being built on borrowed money. And, you know, there's not going to be a winner and a loser. It's going to be relative degrees of dominance or excellence or what have you. China, as a contrast, it is being built on efficiency. That's cheaper chips and open source models. Under sustained pressure from export controls and sanctions, China has chosen a path that trades efficiency for independence. They're willing to spend more, take longer, and accept lower initial yields if it means breaking free from foreign dependencies. It's brute force engineering at a national scale. The secrecy surrounding the project suggests they understand the stakes. 
This isn't just about making computer chips, it's about who controls the foundational technology of the 21st century. Every artificial intelligence breakthrough, every autonomous weapon system, every advanced computing platform ultimately depends on these microscopic patterns etched in silicon. For Western policymakers, this development poses uncomfortable questions. Export controls were supposed to provide decades of breathing room. Instead, they may have accelerated Chinese determination to achieve technological independence. The strategy of containment assumes your competitor will simply accept their constraints. But what happens when they refuse to be contained? The Shenzhen prototype doesn't signal victory for China, not yet, but it does signal that the race is far from over. It shows that given sufficient motivation, resources, and talent, seemingly insurmountable technical barriers can be overcome faster than anyone predicted. Its open source model, Kimi K2, outperforming on several standard benchmarks and reportedly costing less than $5 million to train. Biggest players, Alibaba, Tencent, ByteDance, and Baidu, they are together expected to spend about $35 billion. This week, though, we are going to start to see earnings results from Chinese internet giants. The question now isn't whether China will eventually master EUV technology, but how quickly they'll close the remaining gap. This could become a leapfrog moment. While China works to match current EUV technology, they're simultaneously investing in potential successors. Some Chinese researchers are exploring alternatives to traditional EUV that could sidestep current limitations entirely. If they succeed in developing a fundamentally different approach, they might not just catch up to the current state of the art. They might define the next generation entirely. The implications ripple far beyond semiconductors. This is about the future balance of global power, measured not in military might, but in computational capability. The country that leads in advanced chip manufacturing holds the keys to artificial intelligence supremacy, and artificial intelligence increasingly determines everything from economic productivity to military effectiveness. As this story continues to unfold, one thing becomes clear. The age of assuming permanent technological advantages is ending. In its place, we're entering an era of rapid capability development, where yesterday's impossibilities become tomorrow's realities. The only certainty is that the semiconductor landscape of 2030 will look dramatically different from today's carefully controlled markets. That's it for today, folks. See you in the next video.